I'm gonna make this video look like it came from the same era this did. That's better. What's good, YouTube? It is your boy Thesis, aka Thesis himself, from Vaping with Thesis Ass. Right, God bless it. Now, look, mm. bitches, today we've got the Wake My Bigfoot 200, or the way I'd like to see it is the Fuck Jerry Prince edition. Mm. Hawkeye okay, Smother Truckers. Now, before we get started, let's go and check this bad motherfucker out. We have got Altoid Mods on Altoid Mods. Holy shit. It's one of those days. Huge shout out to my boy Josh and Justino on the Patreon page. Uh, Justino bought a huge plethora of giant box Altoid tins, wanted me to turn these into mods, and that we have done. Myself and my boy Josh have fucked with these bad boys, got them to the point where they're absolutely gorgeous. These are mech mods, these are unregulated. I'm gonna be giving these bad boys away. I'll be doing uh, some live stream ones, second Thursday of every month, as well as uh, something like a $10 sale or something weird like that. I don't know how I'll be giving them away on the Patreon page for those of y'all in educators that can't join us on the live streams because it's too late or whatnot. A huge shout out to the Patreon page for all that you guys do. Thank you so much for supporting independent media such as this. With that being said, don't forget to hit me up on all social media at Thesis himself on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter. All that kind of good stuff. Fuck the small talk, let's go and get a close to personal with the Bigfoot 200 by Wake My Co. Mm. Hey, just welcome to Up Close and Personal with your boy Thesis. Today we have got the Bigfoot 200 watt by Wake Modco. Actually, kind of Segeli. I mean, if you want to look at it, Segeli kind of helped them with these motherfuckers. But with that being said, let's go and get started. Mm. So first and foremost, we got the box. This is actually a beautiful box. Now, in terms of uh, it being like this, it two separate containers like that. I think, now from what I've understood and what I heard, especially talking to other reviewers and shit, it looks like, I think DJLSB was the first one to mention this, is that they have to send it in two separate boxes because that way it's not considered a full kit and then the tariffs aren't as bad. Fun facts aside, we do got this. I think it's, uh, let's see if it's got the fucking shit on here. Yeah, right here, manufactured by Segeli. I wonder if they're manufactured by them and Wake Mod Co's their own company or if it's kind of uh, a sister company of Segeli. So let's go and open up the box. First and foremost, come on. Come on, you motherfucker. Shwag bamps. So we got the mod sitting right here atop that shit. That's where it goes, right there, gorgeousness. We got this. This is why it costs 100 bucks. Do we need a fucking bottle opener? All I'm saying is any way to cut a cost. I get that you want to have an X factor in the device and in the unboxing, which is great, that's fine. Put the X Factor into the device. You don't have to put it into a fucking bottle opener. In this box right here, we do have the obvious. That's gonna be your USB cable. Nice and thick gauge, by the way. I do like that this one's a little bit longer. Come on, bam. Let's see if we can get it to work this time. Shwigga bam, and it does work. This is a beautiful length. This is well over two feet. I like to see this, absolutely sexiness. Long stem on the micro USB. Again, something I like to see. When you got micro USBs that are too short and I can't fit them into the fucking jack correctly, that type of stuff pisses me off. Certificate of uh, the quality control. The little, not again, not that people actually do this shit. They just fucking bop, 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 stamp it. Deal with the problems later. The manual in and of itself uh, does have words right here but the rest of it is just weird ass pictures you don't need the manual by the way it's super simple to operate i'll go ahead and show you guys that in a moment now real quick about this tank the first thing i noticed was the 510 drip tip i haven't seen a tank in quite some time use a 510 drip tip and i'm extremely excited about it mostly because that's my favorite way to vape i like 810s for dripping but generally speaking for a tank i want to use 510s the best way i could put it is when you've got a thinner airflow like this it kind of translates into a fucking laser of flavor onto your tongue as opposed to washing it over with the vape. It's just an overall better vape in my experience. Also, I'm old school like that. I'm old man. What the fuck can you expect? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Good God, that airflow was sexy. Let's go and pop up this foam right here on the bottom. Same shit as we saw before. What I did not see was the mill capacity. And I'm a little bit frustrated with that because I had to actually use um, an eyedropper or rather like a little medicine dose or giver thing right here to get the exact uh, milliliter. And it still wasn't exact. So I'll go ahead and show you guys that video now. Bam. Now, as we're looking at this, you can see me pushing uh, the liquid into the tank. To be completely fair, the coil was pre-saturated. And on top of that, when I was uh, filling it up, I assumed it would be a six milliliter because the glass is so big. But it turns out it's roughly 5.5 to five milliliters once the cotton is pre-saturated. I'm gonna show you guys these juice flow holes around the coil. That, to me, uh, actually lowers the capacity quite a bit, probably about half a, millil uh, half a milliliter. So back to the unboxing of the tank, we do have an extra glass and we do have an extra 510 pin, something you don't see in sub -ohm tanks. The the reason why this exists is uh, so it can accommodate the baby beast coils. I don't recommend you using the baby beast coils specifically because they fucking suck. You do get two coils. You got the regular round wire coils. This thing is light and it's beautiful. It performs. Whew, do I dare say this thing outperforms the mod itself? This thing performs 
excellently. The way that it sounds, just go ahead and take a listen once. It's quiet, it's understated, it's like a beautiful um, hushing of an old school black and white tip like that. It's beautiful. It's almost like when you put your ear up to a shell and you quote unquote hear the ocean. Nah, son, you're actually hearing the future of a Wake Modco Bigfoot sub home tank. This fucking shit is, listen, one more time. It's fucking sexy. 510 drip tip. Um, again, it doesn't fit. Like all of my other 510 drip tips don't fit snugly in here. It's like loose. It's not hot dog in the hallway loose. It's just barely loose enough to where I don't trust it. I dropped this. I lost my 510, my brand new 510 drip tip that I bought for this one specifically. You're going to see some pitting on the paint. This paint is not durable, not by any means. And that is just something I hate to see with something as beautiful of a purple as this. Y'all know I'm a Vikings fan, Prince fan, so that purple goes hard as fuck. Now go ahead and watch these threads. They are so smooth. You can barely, barely feel it even happening. If you look at the top cap right here, you've got this O-ring right there to seal this portion of the, the kidney shaped airflow hole. Now, usually I like to see two of them, that way it lets out the air, but this thing is so big that it doesn't really matter. You can almost fit this giant eyedropper right there. Look at that. The airflow ring itself has one and then two airflow slots. It's more than enough. It's a solid airy draw with just enough restriction to let you know it's there. Now it is a fairly large tank. It's widest portion right here on the bubble glass is 28 millimeters. 24 millimeters at its lowest portion or at its thinnest portion at the bottom, and then 42 millimeters in length, not a small tank, I like me a big tank like this. It actually fits the dimensions perfectly on this bad boy, specifically because there's no uh, corners to speak of except for this bottom right here. It's a right angle. Ba -ba bam. Knurling's around the airflow slots, but you don't need it because this thing is smooth. Whew. It's very classy, but gaudy enough where I'm attracted to it. I dig it a lot. Now, real quick, I want to touch on the part that I was telling you guys about where it actually loses juice capacity. The juice flow holes don't go all the way to the base of the tank on the inside. It actually kind of sits up maybe a millimeter, maybe two. Once the juice gets below that line once it gets below those juice flow holes you're still getting dry hits even though there's probably a half a milliliter or a milliliter of liquid inside of this tank so it really isn't an actual five or 5.5 milliliter tank it's a little bit less than that again something i find frustrating with those juice flow holes but it is what it is there's not much you can do about it the device itself fits beautifully in the hand it's hard to tell which one's the front and which one's the back aside from there being a screen and the buttons if you look at it this way it looks gorgeous like that but it is that fuck jerry type of symbology i was telling you guys about earlier to me that looks like the 1990 threw up all over this bitch and that's why I purchased it I think it's dope as fuck I like the way it looks now again this it being a hundred dollar device is super chintzy feeling this battery door I'm sure is inject molded ABS it is rocket four magnets on the battery door you stick it right here beautiful look at that that's a beautiful snap I like to hear listen to this one more time it's a very minimal operating screen as you see it's just a wattage the resistance and the volts left in the battery or the volts that it's pushing from the batteries rather. Now, at first when I started using it, I was a bit confused because there was none of this information on the screen. It was only 125 watts or hundred watts. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you guys how to switch that real quick. Bam, left and right button or the up and down button. Go to the display, you have two options. The way that I have it set up or you click to the side and it's super minimal, just wattage mode, that's it. All you see is the batteries and then the watts. I actually kind of like something minimal like that, but at the same time, I do want to know what my resistance is at all times. Left and right or up and down, going back into the display, and that way you can see the information right there. Sexy as fuck. It's also fairly easy to change the color, but it's not really changing much. Go ahead and hit left and right, hold it down to get back into the menu setting. Display, hit the fire button once, and then start to rotate. It goes between like a gray, almost like a gray scale, and then one's like an amberish. It's hard to tell. It's like blue, pink, purple, goldish, sort of. But again, these colors are really difficult to tell between them. You hit the fire button again, and it'll set it just like that. Now, if you want to change the brightness, it's just left and right or up and down. Click it once, and it's going to show up the brightness scale right there. Gorgeousness. If you want to get into the temp control mode, it's left and right or up and down. Push and hold it. Scroll up to the top where it says mode, and then you got the power, temp, and exit. This is about as rudimentary as it gets in terms of temperature control. Schweig bamps, motherfuckers. Now, something I want to do mention about these coils in particular is going to be the ohms or the resistance. It tends to jump. You just saw it go from 0.20 to 0.24. I'm going to hit it again, 0.25, hit it again, 0.26, hit it again, 0.27, 0.28, 0.29, 0.30. And then we're at 0 0.30. These coils are supposed to be 0.2 ohms. Now, the recommended wattage is, uh, I think this one's 80 to 120 or 100-ish, something like that. I've been rocking this all the way up to 150 watts. I don't recommend you doing that, uh, but I will say, fuck, 125 watts, 130 watts, 
the flavor on this round wire coil is fucking amazing. I dig it 100%. I could switch from my daily vape of a Freemax Fire Luke, uh, Firelock original edition to this tank right now this second. Those of y'all who know me know that I love the Freemax Fire Luke Firelock. And this is by far and away one of the best performing tanks I've ever used. However, this one is a contender. Easy, like easily a contender. And it's beautiful, not to mention this is an exact match in terms of paint color. I like the shit a lot. So in terms of usage of the device, it's been raw as fuck. I dig the shit out of it. The only downside is it's not a fucking... It doesn't feel as solid as I want it to. It, when I dropped this, when I went right before I went to go plow uh, yesterday, I was in the shop, I dropped this, and immediately it scratched the fuck up right there. Now, granted, I did take a file to it after it already had this pitting and shit, um, only to make sure that it was zinc and not aluminum. You can usually tell uh, when you hit it with a file, if it's got a mirror finish, it's usually zinc. If it has, if it's like a dull finish, it's aluminum. The only feature that I really miss with this device, with the buttons being right here, is going to be uh, the fact that I cannot lock the wattage. One, two, three. It locks the device, but that also means you cannot fire. And I don't like that. I want to be able to fire the device and also have these two buttons locked, the wattage uh, adjustments locked. One, two, three, four. It does the exact same thing. Locks the device and locks this as well. So you cannot fire it. You cannot adjust it. It's just basically off for all intents and purposes. One, two, three unlocks the device now the button this portion is dope as fuck i like the fact that you can hit it from the top hit it from the bottom i like it a lot the only downside is when it's in your pocket motherfucker it's that much easier to hit a button that size and have it go off in your pocket non-stop that's the type of shit that i don't like to see i like to see a button that's easy to feel but it's tactile but at the same time that it's not going to go off in my pocket on accident when it's in my pocket with other devices, other mods, pod systems, phones. I hate that shit when I'm sitting there and I feel my mod go off in my pocket. Not something I like to see. I would prefer to have a smaller button, but for all intents and purposes, god damn, that's a gorgeous ass button. Bitch, it's okay, some other truckers. Now with that being said, let's go and get back to regular view, son. Mm. My final summation is this. The Bigfoot by Wake Mod Co. is uh, is 100 bucks. And at 100, that's my threshold. My threshold is $100. I bought that with my own money because it was requested to me uh, by one of the patrons on the Patreon page. The Wake Mod Co. Bigfoot, let's just be honest, it's Segeli. And to me, if Segeli has something to do with this, or I don't know if Wake Mod Co. had Segeli build it for him, either way, it's, a, it's an impressive device. I didn't want to like it. It looks like Barney the Dinosaur fuck prints, and this is what they made up. And then, and then fuck Jerry, the meme page on Instagram, just, it looks like he fucking just shoved his face into this design and it doesn't really fit, but it fits perfectly. Does that make sense? You, like on paper, I would be like, that shit doesn't fit that mod. But then when it's on there, it fucking fits nicely. I don't mean just physically fits. I mean, this shit goes hard. It legitimately looks like if I were to walk into a Great Clips of fucking 1997, that's the type of shit it would be. I don't know who thought of this. I enjoy it, but it looks like they stole Fuck Jerry's uh, profile picture. That's all I'm saying. Bitch, so my experience has been this. It's a great mod. It's, it's solid. It's a decent setup. It feels a little cheap for $100. $100 is, like I said, it's my threshold. For me, I want a $100 bill. If I'm gonna buy a, a kit, I want it to feel robust. I want it to feel like I can't break it. But I have different values that you have. I work with my hands in the shop. I have a snow plow, dirt bike, all that kind of stuff. I do carpentry. I want to be able to drop this. When I dropped it on the way to go plow in negative 30 degree weather here in Minnesota, on smooth concrete in the shop, I almost had a heart attack. It was fucking scary. I pootered on myself. It was like a fart attack. It, I, it fucked me up psychologically. I was like, God damn, that shit scared me. And then I lost my drip tip. It was a brand new drip tip. I was depressed about it. I can't show you what it looks like on this device. It's purple and pink and white and beautiful. I can't show it to you because it's lost. I feel bad for it. To me, it feels like I lost like a like an ancestor off into the shop and I can't find it. It's gone forever. I'll never get it back. What I'm getting at is it's a it's worth a hundred bucks as long as you're not gonna drop it. When I dropped it, it felt like it it broke it didn't but it's been acting a little funky since then the the uh, screen for example or the whole mod will feel like it shut off I have to hit it a few times I'll like shake it a little bit and it come back to life I don't know if that has to do with the batteries I'm, I have a feeling that it might but at the same time parts of the device feel loose bam right into the sled it just feels a little looser than I would prefer. The 510 is nice and secure, it's nice and solid, that's not a problem, but the 510 drip tip, no matter which one I put into it, it feels a little loose, just a little bit. So the one that it comes with, 
feels nice and snug, nice and tight. I don't like the one that it comes with because it's clear. Clear drip tips to me fuck me up because it gets all condensation. It just looks gross. I don't want to be touching spit and condensation over and over again. I want to pretend that I'm not touching spit and condensation with one that I can't see through. So to make a long story short, this device feels good. It feels pretty solid. The ABS plastic battery door is fine. The fucking magnets on it are fine. They haven't come out. I like this device and it performs flawlessly. It's lacking the options that you would want to see in a temp control suite, uh, the, the wattage adjustability, things like that. I had to, I couldn't even find how many milliliters the fucking tank holds with the bubble glass. Y'all saw that shit, I had to do that myself. I had to go get a fucking uh, mouth dropper with milliliters on it to find out that it's a 5.5 mil capacity. The one part I don't like about the 510 is the deck is not gold plated like the rest of it. I wish everything was gold plated to look the same. Don't come at me with some fucking Segeli ass looking 510 decks that's all stainless steel. Bitch, if you're gonna make the whole thing gold plated, just go for it. Charge me an extra 10 bucks, that's all right. I know it doesn't cost y'all ninja kitties over in China to fucking $10 for a, for a gold plated 510, mm-mm. Whoo! Do I suggest this device at 100 bucks? No. Biggest reason being is because for me and my values and what I prefer is something that's more robust. Is this a mod that's worth a hundred bucks if you don't work with your hands? Absolutely. If this was gonna sit in the studio, sit in my pocket, I'm not worried about dropping it if I wasn't clumsy, I wouldn't have a problem paying, paying 100 bucks for it. It's a solid device, but I also don't want to see ABS plastic at 100 bucks. I want the shit to have a swivel door that locks in the fucking place if I'm going to pay that much money. It's weird because once you start paying more and more money for a device, it seems like durability is, it, it kind of goes down. Look at Asmodus, 330 bucks for a device. You're also paying for a piece of wood. It's a piece of stab wood that somebody carved into a gorgeous looking, uh, it's almost a piece of art, you feel me? This is kind of stepping into that realm though it's mass produced. That's kind of the difference. The tank in and of itself is what sells me. The tank, the flavor, the way that it feels, the smoothness of this whole portion, the airflow ring, god damn, they fucking killed it. It looks beautiful. Look at the gold on that. I like that type of shit. It's gorgeous. The biggest downfall with the tank is the, the, I don't understand the juice flow holes and why it sits up so high. It's like a millimeter or two that you're gonna have right at the bottom. You're never gonna get rid of that 0.5 mils of juice at the bottom. Once that reaches the absolute minimum, it stops actually going inside of those wicking holes. Then it can't reach it. So it's like, it's not really 5.5 mils, it's just five or 4.8, whatever it is. Mm. Whoever made that airflow, Whoever designed the airflow, either did it, whether it's accident or not, deserves an award. This thing sounds beautiful. It sounds as smooth as it tastes. Listen to it once. Goodness gracious. The flavor on it is on point. Let me go and give you guys one more go at the clouds. God damn, son. That shit hits hard, but it's not a, it's not a fucking, it's not a donkey punch. It's not a donkey punch to a face. It's like if a five-year-old punched you in the face, you could see it coming. They're slow. They're not very, you know, hand-eye coordinated. And it hits you, even their strongest punch is gonna hurt mildly. You know what I'm saying? That's how this feels. This is a beautiful flavor tank. This is not something that was used for, for uh, cloud chasing or anything like that. The threads on it are fucking flawless. Everywhere you look on this tank specifically, they took their time. The paint on it, not the world's most, you know, durable paint as you can see. Uh, once I dropped that, I just took a file to it to make sure it was actually zinc as opposed to aluminum. If you look at aluminum, uh, aluminum tends to be a duller shine when you hit it with the file. I'm not sure how true that is on everything. I haven't tested it on a multitude of things, um, but I can tell you, you know, I've tested it on a bunch of different shit like this. Hit it with the file if it's shiny comparative to zinc. Zinc is way easier to cast, I get why they did it. It's not a super high-end mod, but for a hundred bucks, I think it's well worth it if you're not gonna drop the shit. Mm. Bitch, it's okay, some other truckers. Now with that being said, hit that notification button. Let me know you like the shit in the comments. I wanna hear your guys' thoughts specifically on devices like this, that fucking, the rest of them, they look beautiful. I love the way they look. I like gaudy shit, that's just me personally. You know what I'm saying? I don't wear a bunch of jewelry. I don't look gaudy when you see me. I got cowboy boots on and ripped up jeans, but, when it comes to like owning stuff, I like to look at pretty shit. I've got gold mods, I've got Asmodus mods. I want my truck to be clean as fuck. Even when I go mudding, I do it in a gaudy way. You feel me? It's that simple. Bitch, it's okay, some other truckers. Now with that being said, I wanna tell y'all that I appreciate y'all for vaping with Thesis. It is your boy Thesis, I'm out. Mm.